Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today the congregation of St John Southgate is gathered with some of us in person and some through this video remotely. We are gathered for our annual Thanksgiving celebration. And the theme this year as you can see on your screen, is the Olympics, the St. John's Olympics. And the, and the sermon that I've prepared for you today is an all-ages sermon, something I hope the children of God of all ages might be able to understand and appreciate. So if you are worshipping with us at home, God bless you on this day of thanksgiving and celebration. I pray that you'll be blessed in your time of worship at home today. Let's now hear the word from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eye on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. Lord, let us hear your love and grace proclaimed for us today through this word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Some of you, probably many of you, maybe even pretty close to all of you, would have heard the name Stephen Bradbury. Stephen Bradbury. He's become, of course, a, a bit of a household name, to be sure. But not everyone, certainly not all of the children, will have heard of Stephen Bradbury. So, let me tell you a little bit of his story. Stephen Bradbury is an Australian, a Queenslander, and he is famously an Australian Olympian, having competed in not just one, not just two, but three Winter Olympic Games, representing our fine nation of Australia. And the sport that he competed in was speed skating. Yes, that's skating on ice. And being an athlete, not surprisingly, he dreamed of winning gold at the Olympics. It was a pretty bold dream for him to have though, because when he went to the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA, how many Australians do you think had ever won gold at a Winter Olympics? Do you think maybe three, maybe four? No, none, not a single one. No one ever had. And on top of that, no one from anywhere in the whole of the Southern Hemisphere had ever won an individual gold at the Winter Olympics. Never, ever, ever. So for Stephen Bradbury, they were some pretty high hopes that he had. Some would even say it was an unrealistic hope. And on top of that, over in Salt Lake City in 2002, do you know how old Stephen was? At that point, he was already 30 years old. 30. Now, 30 years old to me, that sounds pretty young. But for a speed skater, he was considered, well, you know, a veteran. 
And that's putting it kindly. He would have been thought of as well past his prime. But still, he was determined to compete, to give it his best, and maybe he could even come away with that gold medal that he so dreamed of. He certainly hoped so, especially seeing as being 30 years of age, this would most definitely be his last Olympic Games, his last chance. Ah, so everything had been building to this moment, to these Olympic Games. I mean, he had trained and trained and trained so hard for so many, many years. And you know what? He had even suffered some terrible injuries along the way in training and in competition too. He had once, even in a crash, had the blade of one of his opponents slice open his leg. The blade from their ice skate, it sliced open his leg and very nearly cost him his life. Hmm. But you know what? Through all of those challenges and setbacks, he persevered. He fixed his eye on the goal, on the gold, in fact. But it was in Salt Lake City that he had to make it happen. And to do that, he first needed to reach the final of his event. And his event was the 1000 metre speed skating, of course. Well, Stephen Bradbury made his way through the heats, claiming himself a spot in the semi-final. And in the semi-final, he knew he had to come up with a strategy. That's right. Now, he knew that he wasn't the fastest of the speed skaters in the field, not even close. There were guys who'd grown up in the Northern Hemisphere, not the Southern Hemisphere, the Northern one. And they had been skating on ice since the time they learned to walk as little babies, little toddlers. He knew that there was no way he could match their natural talent on ice. So, his plan was just to, well, you know, hang around at the back of the pack if he could keep up with them indeed. To hang around at the back and try and, well, just keep up with the others. And then, maybe, if someone fell over or was perhaps disqualified, maybe he could sneak on through. And you know what? They did. In the semi-final, someone fell over and one of the skaters even got disqualified, which bumped Stephen up and got him a spot in the Olympic final. He really did just sneak through though. So then we come to the final of the 1000 meters speed skating, the gold medal race. And Stephen knew that really all he could do here was the very same thing, go in with that same strategy. All he could do was just cruise along at the back of the pack and hope that somehow, miraculously, all obstacles between him and that gold medal might just disappear. He knew that he couldn't win it with his own strength or talent. I mean, all of his competitors were, get this, all of his competitors were either current or former world champions. Do you think Stephen Bradbury had ever won a title like that? No, he had not. So yes, he knew he just needed the obstacles to disappear. And well, in that final, every single obstacle did disappear. The four other competitors in that gold medal race, on the very last turn, all of them fell over. No kidding. And Stephen Bradbury, he just glided on past, not really even pushing past them on that last bend. 
not even putting in any effort anymore. He just slid on past with his hands in the air and a shocked and happy expression on his face. He'd won the race. He was an Olympic champion. He was an Olympic gold medalist. And no one could ever take that away. Ah. You know, on this, our Olympic themed Thanksgiving celebration, I can think of no better description of how we all compete in the race marked out before us. The race of life, that is, in God's world. You see, none of us are good enough, if you like, to be called the children of God. I mean, God's perfect. How could I be God's child? How could I ever possibly win the race to be the best child, the chosen one, the one chosen for adoption, chosen above all others to be a part of God's perfect family and and live with God forever? How could that ever happen to me? How could I ever achieve that? Well, I can't. That's not a race that I would ever win. If God required only real winners to be in God's family, that is. But because Jesus died on the cross for us and rose again, we can toss aside that way of thinking. We don't have to persevere in the race of life like with our own efforts, trying to work our way into God's family. No, our perseverance in Christ is like this. We can just be pleased to be on the track, in the race, doing the one thing that God hopes all people might do, fixing our eye on Jesus, having faith, and heading toward the finish line full of faith, hope, and love. When we do that, there is never going to be a single obstacle between us and the goal. There aren't even going to be any other competitors that we've got to hope might fall over. No, Jesus, by sacrificing himself for us, has removed every obstacle. We are free to glide on through. Looking around like Stephen Bradbury did, with shock and awe and joy. And we are able, even right now, to give thanks to God for that goodness. You see, Jesus perfects our race because Jesus perfects our faith. And that is something worth giving thanks to God for. Children of God, and that is what you are, the gold is yours. The gold is ours. We win because Jesus lost on the cross, but rose victorious so we can stand on the podium with him forever. All our thanksgivings today, on this our Thanksgiving celebration Sunday, all of our thanksgivings come back to that truth. So, let's give thanks to God today for that and all things with joyful hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen.